Hey everybody, it is Monday the 6th of April and it is the beginning of Spirit Week. So you can see I'm here dressed in my Davidson Day spirit top just for you. I hope you guys are dressed up in your red, white, and blue spirit wear too. Um, have your parents send me a picture. I'm going to take everybody's pictures. If they text me a picture to my private number, I'm going to take all the pictures and put them together and send your parents a text so they can see everybody's how cute everybody looks in their red, white, and blue today, okay? Um, tonight we have a full moon. That's pretty cool. So go outside and look up tonight and you'll see a full moon. It's supposed to be a warm, sunny day today. I think some clouds are going to move in later this afternoon, but it's going to be beautiful in the morning and, and pretty warm. So get out there and play as soon as you're done with your schoolwork, okay? Sounds great. Okay, you guys did an amazing job finishing Unit 8 last week. We had to do a unit test, plus we had to do that cumulative test, and you made it through both. So awesome job. I'm super proud of you. Um, today we're going to begin Unit 9, and uh, you're going to use the packet that has all the 9-1 materials in it, as well as your math journal today, okay? So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to play a game, and the game is called Product Pileup. And if you go to the Everyday Math website, remember um, everybody's username and login are in the front of your planner, and it says Everyday Math. And go to that and log into Everyday Math, and then click the yellow button that says Games, and then click the game that says Product Pile Up, and you can play the game against the computer, okay? That's your job today. Now, if we were together in school, there's a little activity that you could do. Um, on the cover, you can make a booklet or you can fill out this page. And it's just hints um, for t t different strategies and hints for different games that you've played this year with me. Um, you can skip that. Just pr play product pile up. If you want to, for a challenge when you're done, you can write some hints for how you think you, uh, to win product pile up to beat the computer playing that. Um, you guys have also played Factor Bingo recently. So you could also talk about um, some strategies maybe you came up for winning that if you're playing that with your mom or dad. So that's just an enrichment. But I do want everybody to play product pile up. That's everybody should do that. And then if you want to write about your strategies for winning, that's a enrichment activity. That's a you you can choose to do that if you'd like to. Okay. The other things we're going to do for math today is we're going to review finding area and perimeter. We just did this in our cumulative assessment, so we should be have that in our mind pretty well. So you're going to see there are some problems on this page, and I'm going to read the directions to you. And this is page 275 in your math journal. In the spring, the garden club will plant a garden. Each child will have one square meter of the garden to plant. There are 16 children in the club, so the area of the garden will be 16 square meters. Four children drew shapes for the garden below. So you can see there's four different shapes. Find the area of each shape. Remember, to find the area of each shape, you have to multiply the length times the width. And when you get down to this shape, the rectilinear shape, you're going to have to divide it into two, two smaller rectangles. You can do it here or here. Find the area of both of those rectangles, add them together, and that'll give the area of the whole shape, OK? Um, circle the shapes that have an area of 16 square meters. Cross out the shapes that do not have an area of 16 square meters. Okay, so you're going to find the area for each shape. Circle the shapes that have an area of 16 square meters. Cross out any that don't. Okay? Then, number two, the club wants to build a fence around the garden, but they do not want to spend a lot of money. They need to find a shape that has an area of 16 square meters and the shortest perimeter. Okay, so remember perimeters when we add all the side lengths together. For the rim around the outside. Which of the above shapes has an area of 16 square meters and the shortest perimeter? So then, so you can rule out if, if they don't have an area of 16, if you cross them out, you can rule them out. You're not going to be looking at those. But any of the gardens that you circled, you're going to go back and find the perimeter of those gardens by adding all the side lengths and deciding which one has the shortest side lengths, the shortest perimeter. Okay, and then tell me which one that was. What letter was that? And how did you find the perimeter of the shape? That's just going to be a number model where you show me how you added all the side lengths together and found the perimeter of that shape. Okay, that is page 275. And 276 is math boxes today. Please do that. Let me look at number five really fast and see if I need to give you some help with that. Okay, so let's look at, they want you to look at problem three. 
It says, Laura walks about one-sixth of a mile. That's one out of six total parts. Elliot walks a longer distance. Mark and label a point on the number line to show how far Elliot could walk. So Elliot, anything greater than one-sixth is how far Elliot could walk, okay? Then you have to write the fraction you wrote that's greater than one-sixth down here. And it, your fraction will be greater than one-sixth, okay? All right. Then down here it says, explain how you plotted a distance that Elliot could walk in problem three. Well, you know any fraction that is closer to one whole than one sixth is, is going to be greater than one sixth. So you can tell me about that in a sentence. My fraction blank is closer to one whole than one sixth. Okay, does that sound good for number five? Awesome. All right, that's math for today. So three, oh, and I forgot the home link. The home link is kind of fun. It's a maze. You do need to write the product above your answer as you find your way through the maze. There's directions, so read it really carefully. This is one I know in the past some people kind of want to scoot through as quickly as they can. So read the directions really carefully. It says pretend. There you have to read up here. There's, it's about a Greek myth, so that's kind of cool if you're into that. Um, you're going to try to find your way out of the maze. Each room you enter has to have a greater product than the room that you were in before. So every every time you go to a new number model, it has to have a larger product than the product that you're, you're on. So think about that. Write the products above your problems. There's more than one way to solve this maze, I'll tell you that too. Okay, so three things. Product pile up. Go to Everyday Math and play that game. Um, the only two people I just remembered, Anthony and um, Addie, Adelyn, um, you guys were absent that Friday when we put those in our um, planners, our usernames and passwords, but I texted them to your parents. So if, um, if you don't have, go ahead and write them in your planners. If you can't find them, I still have them. I'll text them to you again, okay? Um, but everybody else has it already in the front of their planner. All right, play that, um, the game. Number one, product pileup. Number two, complete page 275. Number three, do the math boxes. Um, I would like a picture of both of these pages. I'd like to see both of those, okay? Um, and then your math home links, where you need to write the product above each problem that you're on, find your way out of the maze. Remember, every new room, every new number model you go to has to have a bigger product than the product you were just on, okay? And then show me that. So that takes two steps. They don't tell you you have to write the products above it, but I'm telling you that. That just helps you remember and not make mistakes, okay? All right, so that's it for math. And I hope you have lots of fun playing Product Pileup. I tried it out on the computer, and it's pretty fun. Um, so the next thing we're going to do together today is spelling pretests. So you're going to go ahead to your week three packet. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. The week three packet, we have a short week this week because this week is Monday through Wednesday are full days. Thursday would be a half day due to Grandparents' Day, so we're not going to have as much to do on Thursday. Friday, we're off for Good Friday, and then Monday, we're off for Easter Monday um, for people who observe that holiday. So we are going to be off. We have a long weekend coming up. So this is a short week, and next week will be a short week since we have Monday off after Easter. So um, we're going to keep all of our week three things together in that file folder in a safe place because it's, they are going to be for this week and for next week. All right? Okay. So we are going to go ahead and take the spelling test this week, knock it out, and then we won't have a spelling test next week, okay? All right, so I need you to go ahead and take the spelling pretest. It's for Unit 5, Week 3. All the words have closed syllables with a vowel consonant, consonant vowel pattern. Have mom and dad read list one to you. If you miss one word or you don't miss any words, then go ahead and go for list two this week. Otherwise, stick with list one. When you're all done with that, you can write your words here. If you want to think of a more creative way, last week we talked about sidewalk chalk. There's lots of other things. You can use a whiteboard if you have a whiteboard. If you want to do it a different way, you can, sometimes I have friends draw pictures and put the words into their picture. You can do that. Um, I do want everybody to write the vocabulary words and their definitions down here. And then you also are going to complete um, the next page, which is page 134. Okay, so that's two spelling pages plus the pretest this morning.
And then we're going to have our vocabulary turn and talk. So for that, I'm about to show you word cards that go with your reading writing workshop book. And we are on unit five, week three, teamwork. So, and our question this week is, how do teams work together? So all of our stories are going to talk about that. So I think we're going to have a lot of brave people and a lot of community helpers in our stories today, or this week, I should say. So um, we're going to, you can um, go ahead and review page 358 and 359 with mom and dad. Talks about um, um, people who are trained to rescue other people and how they um, need to be brave. So go ahead and do that and talk about it with mom and dad. And then the words I'm about to go over with you are gonna be found on the next two pages. Those are our eight vocabulary words that will be found in all of our stories this week and next week. Five of them will show up on your vocabulary and spelling test. Um, so open up to 360 and 361, and then you'll have the words with the pictures in front of you that I'm about to read with you, okay? All right, here's our cards. Are you ready to turn and talk? Remember, the turn and talk rules are, you listen to Mrs. Dixon as I read the word. I'm gonna read the definition. I'm gonna use it in an example. And then I'm gonna ask you to turn and talk using that word uh, with your parents, okay? All right, here we go. Our first word this week is accidental. Um, something that is accidental happens for no apparent reason and is unexpected. Jason felt bad about the accidental mess he had made on the driveway. Have you ever made an accidental mess? I know I have. All right, we're going to look at this picture, and you can see he made an accidental mess on the driveway. He didn't mean to drop the eggs. It was accidental. Can you tell your partner about a time when you did something that was accidental? You didn't do it on purpose. Ready? Turn and talk. Our second word today is careless. Uh-oh. When someone is careless, he or she is not paying attention. And we can see that suffix less means without. So if we have careless, it means without care. Without, you see, you're not being careful, you're being careless. Okay? So when someone, like I said, when someone's being careless, they're not paying attention. Um, if we look at this picture, you can see the boy made a mess because he was careless and he wasn't paying attention. Maybe he wasn't looking at where his glass was on the table. Maybe he shook the table by accident or he was moving his hands around and he knocked the cup over. Have you ever done anything that was careless? We all have, right? Okay. Can you turn and talk with your mom or dad about a time when you were careless? And I bet they'll be able to tell you about a time they were careless too. Turn and talk. Oh, our next word is disasters. Can you see this picture? This looks like a tornado to me. Let's find out about the word disasters. Disasters are sudden misfortunes. Tornadoes and other natural disasters often cause a lot of damage. Have you ever heard about a natural disaster other than a tornado? Have you heard of a hurricane or a tsunami? There are lots of different types of natural disasters, aren't there? Sometimes natural disasters can cause damage to people's homes and their neighborhoods. Um, hopefully not, but occasionally that does happen. With your partner, can you make a list of other natural disasters you've heard about? I just listed a few that I know of. Um, can you, there's more, though. You can think about our weathering and erosion unit. We talked about some natural disasters in that recently in science. Do you remember we talked about the big flood in the canyon or Mount St. Helens? Do you remember what those natural disasters were? Okay, so turn and talk using the word disasters with mom or dad. Right now, people who have to deal with natural disasters often have to use special equipment. So this is our next word, equipment. And you can see this looks like equipment a firefighter would use. Let's talk about that word. Equipment are the tools needed for a job. Firefighters wear special equipment to fight fires. You can see here they'd have to have a pretty a helmet to keep if anything was falling from a burning building like um, the beams in the building. Um, they have that to protect their heads. And then they have heavy clothing that protects their skin. You also know sometimes they wear face masks that are connected to like an oxygen tank so they can breathe if there's a lot of smoke, right? That's all equipment. They have those heavy boots so they don't step on anything hot or sharp. Um, so if we look at this picture, these are, this is all the equipment um, that the firefighters use when they fight fires. Now, you use equipment every day as a student. 
Can you think about some of the equipment you have to have? Like your workbooks and other things you need to play, like games that we play or like different school supplies you use. That's the equipment you use to do your job. And your mom and dad have to use equipment to do their jobs too. So why don't you turn and talk about the equipment you use and then listen to what your parents have to say depending on their job. I bet some of them have some really interesting equipment they use to complete their jobs, right? Let's turn and talk using equipment. Okay, our next word is harmful. Do you see this plant? You see how it has three leaves? Have you ever heard that statement, leaves of three, let it be? That's because a lot of plants that look like this can make people have allergies. They can break out. This is like a poison ivy plant, and it can be harmful. There's that suffix full, meaning full of. So harmful would be, this plant would be full of harm if you're allergic to it. It causes you to break out in a rash. All right. So something harmful is causing harm or hurt. Poison ivy leaves may be harmful to your skin if you're allergic to them. What other things might be harmful to you? Well, that's why we have directions on medicine. If you took too much medicine, that could be harmful to you, right? There are lots of things that can be harmful. If you're not thinking and you're not playing with a toy the right way, that you could get hurt. That would be harmful. So with mom and dad, have you ever come across something that is harmful? Can you turn and talk about that? Use the word harmful in your discussion. Ready? Turn and talk. The next word is great. This word is prevention, and that's such an important word. Let me tell you what it means. Here's our picture. Prevention means stopping something from happening. In this picture, Dave is teaching uh, Fran and Juan about fire prevention. So if you wanted to prevent a fire from happening, you, you would use fire prevention. You would do things like at your house, like make sure you didn't leave anything, any like dishcloths or anything near your, uh, your stove when it's on that could catch on fire, right? That your fire alarm is working, your smoke detector is working. There are lots of ways we can use fire pre uh, prevention in our homes, and we can prevent other things from happening that are dangerous too, just by being careful and cautious and smart, right? Okay, so what are some things you can do for fire prevention at your house? With your mom or dad, will you make a quick list? You can both come up with ideas. Things to prevent fires in your house. We're going to use the word prevention in our turn and talk. Ready? Turn and talk. Okay. The next word is purpose. A purpose is the reason something is done. The reason of Jay's um, helmet and his protective clothes when he plays hockey is to protect himself. Gloves, if you're playing an outside sport on the ice in the cold weather, gloves would keep your hands from getting too cold, wouldn't they? So they would be protect, they would have, their purpose would be to protect your hands. This picture demonstrates the word purpose. Okay, this boy is wearing a helmet and gloves while he plays hockey to protect his head and his hands. He could get hurt if he doesn't wear a helmet or gloves. And the purpose of the helmet and the gloves are to protect the boy. Can you look at the picture again? With your partner, can you look for the purpose of other things the boy might have on? I see other things he's using that might have a purpose. Can you turn and talk with your partner about the purpose of those things in the picture? Ready? Turn and talk. And our last word this week is respond. And in this uh, picture, you can see an ambulance. And people who drive fire trucks, police cars, and ambulances, also people who work in emergency rooms, are called first responders. That means they respond to an emergency right away. There are our helpers. We need them in our community, don't we? So in this, let's read about the word respond while we look at the picture of the ambulance. To respond is to react. It is important for this ambulance to respond very quickly to an emergency. Um, someone had somebody in the, who needs this ambulance needs to get to a hospital really, really quickly. And the people who drive the ambulance are not only trained to drive the ambulance really quickly through traffic so that the, the person, their, pa their passenger is uh, mixed to the hospital safely. They're also trained in lots of first aid. So when they first get to the scene where somebody needs help, they're able to give them medical help as well. So can you think of a time you had to respond to something? Maybe I called on you to answer a question and you had to respond. 
or somebody called you on the phone and you had to respond. Think about a time you had to respond quickly to a situation, and your parents can too, because we've all had to respond to situations care quickly, and do a turn and talk. Thank you. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do today is a little bit of cursive, and then we're done for our day. So your cursive today is going to be two review pages, and you're gonna look in your book at pages 44 and 45, and this page is a game. You can play the game by having your parents say freeze and then you write the word, or you can just copy the words underneath where they're written in cursive. And then this one, is, we, if you remember, we've done these a few times before. The, um, the next page is the print cursive test. So you're gonna see some words here, and then you're gonna see some blank lines here. You're gonna take these printed words and write them in cursive. And then I'm gonna write some more words, three more words for you to, to write in print and then write in cursive. And then what, if we were in class together, I would write these words on the board or call them out and, and you would have to write them in cursive. I'm gonna print them in the directions. So, but all of those words that you need for page 45 will be in the directions today, okay? And you're gonna write them in um, print and then cursive in the first columns and then just in cursive in the last column, okay? That is it for today. I hope you have a marvelous Monday, Patriots. I hope you're feeling super uh, Davidson Day patriotic today. And um, I can't wait to see the pictures of you guys uh, wearing your DDS um, spirit wear. And I hope you have a great Monday and have fun playing Product Pile Up online. Bye.